Jack, you got any weekend plans? Handouts today. Um, I'm going to start off with 74, and so like we've done the last few classes here, I kind of split it up into a little bit new, a little bit review, so that you're hopefully building up a good foundation as we move along here. 
I will warn you though that the new piece here, 74 and 75, is about 95% stuff that you already know from Algebra 2 and it doesn't take very long to explain. So the warning is if you don't focus in here the first five or ten minutes you might blink and um, not know uh, what's going on here. So 74 is our notes. <clears throat> we need to talk about this. And the 95 percent of what this type of limit question is, because we're still in the limit unit, the work behind this is actually finding horizontal asymptotes, which you've done in Algebra 2. It's good to review it because I know they ask it on the ACT. But if you can do that, then again, there's almost nothing else left to do in calculus. A little bit, but not much. So the front page of this has three questions because there's three things that can happen with horizontal asymptote rules. Either the degree of your denominator is bigger than the degree of your numerator like this first example or the degree of the numerator could be bigger than the degree of the denominator and then the only other possibility is if the degrees are equal. So I'll slide this back up in just a second but here's an example of where the degrees are equal. <coughs> okay so the part that I hope you remember so that you don't have to relearn this is what the horizontal asymptotes are based on those. So when the degree of the denominator is bigger, again what you probably see on the ACT and what you should have learned in Algebra 2 is that you have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. The only additional step to be able to translate this to calculus though is you need to know what a horizontal asymptote is. Horizontal asymptote is a way to describe the far left and far right of the graph. If it has a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, it means the further you go to the left, the closer the graph gets to 0, and the further you go to the right, the closer the graph gets to 0. That's what horizontal asymptote means. So there's a good chance that you guys may have written it like this in Algebra 2. You might have said as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to 0, and as x goes to positive infinity, y goes to 0. I'm just guessing that you guys did that. That this looks familiar? Good. In calculus, we just use limit. We say the exact same thing, but we use limit notation. So we would say the limit as x approaches negative infinity of that function is 0. And or the limit as x approaches positive infinity. Sorry, I'm having a stroke over here. Positive infinity would be zero. The notation's a little bit different, but you're not really describing anything different than on the left. But since we should be able to calculate that horizontal asymptote without a graph, we should need to look at the graph to see what it approaches. Simply knowing this tells me that it approaches zero if you're going to the left or zero if you're going to the right. And so that will always be the case when the degree of the denominator is bigger than the degree of the numerator. If it's flipped and the degree of the numerator is bigger, in Algebra 2 you would have said it does not have a horizontal asymptote. And what that means is your graph is either going up or down to negative infinity. Okay. We don't need to write in behavior because that's an Algebra 2 way to do it. We're going to do it calculus way. So if you have the graph, you could look at the graph and say, okay, the further left you go, this guy goes up. Or the further right you go, the 
further right, as x goes to infinity, it goes down. But if you don't have a graph or access to a calculator to see that, what we do in calculus is we just say does not exist. Because infinity and negative infinity are concepts, but they're not really numbers. You can't reach infinity, so it can't. Infinity can't be a number if you can't ever get to it. So the safe bet is to just say does not exist. If it does not have a horizontal asymptote, it's going to infinity or negative infinity, we don't need to be that specific. We can just say that the limit does not exist. So horizontal asymptote is zero. It approaches zero on the left, zero on the right. Horizontal asymptote doesn't exist. We can say the limit does not exist, whether you're going to the left or to the right. And the last possibility, and then once we turn the page here, we won't have graphs, but we, we don't need graphs. If the degrees are equal, do you guys remember how to find horizontal asymptote from that? You guys remember talking about horizontal asymptotes in algebra two? Okay. If it's if they're equal, you do y equals leading coefficient of numerator over leading coefficient of denominator. Does that sound familiar now? No? Okay. So coefficients, just a fancy word for the number that's being multiplied. And leading coefficient means the number that's being multiplied by the x with the biggest exponent. So like the coefficient of x squared is 4, the coefficient of x squared is 3, but the leading coefficient in the numerator is 4. Because it's being multiplied by the x with the biggest exponent and the leading coefficient of the denominator is 1. So this guy has a horizontal asymptote at y equals 4. And all that means, you have to understand what horizontal asymptote means, otherwise this doesn't help you at all. That means the far left and far right of the graph approach 4. So if you were asked, what's the limit as x goes to negative infinity, you should say 4. Or if it asks, what is x What's the limit as x approaches positive infinity? You should say 4. So you always want to try to apply these horizontal asymptote rules anytime you're doing the limit as x approaches infinity or negative infinity. If it's some other number, we've got to do the other step that we did. But infinity and negative infinity, <coughs> there's very, very, very little work to do. But you have to know all three of these cases. So on the back, I will tell you what my thought process would be. So now I'm not graphing them for you, but this is a rational function, just a big function, frac uh, the function is just a big fraction. The degrees are equal, so the horizontal asymptote would be y equals leading coefficient over leading coefficient or y equals 1 and what that means is whether you're approaching the left or right side of the graph it's going to approach a y value of 1 and that's it you don't have to put any more thought into it than that if you know what horizontal asymptote means you're familiar with how that's asked in a limit question it's the same three horizontal asymptote rules from previous course so question 5 the degrees are equal again, so the horizontal asymptote would be y equals leading coefficient 2 over leading coefficient 1, or y equals 2. And what a horizontal asymptote tells me is what the far right and far left of the graph approaches. Question 5 happened to ask about the far left, but it would have been the same answer if it had been asking for the far right. And that's why I said if you guys are not careful and you're not paying attention too carefully here, you're going to be confused how we're getting these answers so quickly. When the degree of the numerator is bigger, there's no horizontal asymptote, so the limit doesn't exist. Notice I don't really care if it says infinity or negative infinity. The answer would be the same either way. Uh, Number seven, the degrees are equal, 
So the horizontal asymptote would be leading coefficient over leading coefficient, or y equals 1, which means the far right and far left of the graph approaches 1. Okay, and then the last thing I want to say about this before um, I let you try it on the other handout, you can see how quick these questions are, so that next page honestly shouldn't take you more than about five or six minutes total. But if you have more than one term, you can just do these separately. This horizontal asymptote is one. <coughs> this guy's horizontal asymptote would be two. And with limits, if it says add them in between, you can just work them out separately and then add them. So that question looks pretty complicated, but because of this, because of the x approaches infinity or the x approaches negative infinity, that's when we get to just use these horizontal asymptote rules. Question nine, this tells me it fits that type of question. This approaches one, this approaches one. If it says subtract in between them, then subtract. If you graph this big mess of stuff in your calculator and you go to the far left of the graph, the y value is going to get closer to zero the further left you go. And we can analyze that function and know that about the function without the graph, without a calculator, and with very little work if we know how these couple things fit together. Okay, so I know that's pretty quick. But again, that's really all there is to it. So, um, okay, so again, the next handout, there's 18 questions here. But again, once you know what you're doing, you shouldn't be spending more than about five or ten seconds per question so it's fine to go a little bit slower at first but check those eight or work those 18 number that assignment is 75 the notes was 74 your practice is 75 and then <coughs> either check your answers with the class website or have one person at your little table group do it and then y'all can compare and then that's all of the new information I'm giving to you today. But I will give you one word of caution. This type of question, as little of work as it is and as little as you need to know for these questions, this is often one of the more missed questions on our next test. Because, or my theory is, since it's not too difficult and you don't have to practice that many questions to be able to do it, students generally don't worry about the questions and then it kind of goes off your radar and then you see it on the test and you don't remember because you haven't thought about it in a couple weeks. Students just don't do a great job of reviewing that. So I only mention that verbally to hopefully encourage you to um, mark up this page in a way to remember to review it. So take the time you need to there. Again, check your answers online. If there's any of those that you're not getting and you don't understand, then of course I want you to ask so that you can get that cleared up. But that's the new part today. And then the review of the old part, again, trying to split it up about half and half in this unit. Number 76 is what I'm calling a mid-unit review because we're about halfway through this unit. So it's a couple questions from what we did on day one with limits, a couple questions from day two and what we did on limits, a couple questions that we did on day three on limits. So that should give you a good indicator of how well prepared you are for the first half of this unit. And if there's any type of question that you're still struggling with, and you might want to circle those to um, put a little more emphasis on before the test rolls around. Now, my website does not have the answers to 76, but um, all of the questions on 76 are from your past handouts. So if you have your binder in order, you should be able to just flip it back a page or two, and you can find those exact same questions, and you can compare your answers that way. <coughs> So that's the entire 
planned for today. Um, I am going to ask that you turn in 75 before I see you on Monday, but again, you probably should be finished with that in just a couple minutes. Of course, check your answers before you uh, turn it in. And anything I can help with, I will be happy to help you with. Should be a pretty light day if you have not been um, falling behind. That review shouldn't be too much work. And you've got the rest of class for that. So. Now, of course, if you're not convinced on a couple of these, you could still graph them and look at the far right and far left of the graph on your calculator. That's way more work than you should be doing on these question types, but if it makes you feel better about your your work and your thought process, then I guess doing that a couple times may not be a bad idea.
feet. No, no, no. Listen. Yeah, you know, the slider the deal. Mm -hmm. I have to pull that might be out tiny too. in order to take the gun apart. That slider deal when he comes out of there. Oh, yeah, kind of so I like you jump on number two. Bid it. I bid it. Not oh. <laughs> it's not it's a metal piece, piece on the slider. Oh, it is. You know? Yeah. And Jacob tried to bite it off. Pull it. So, I have a shot. It's going to be. No, they're both heading towards one. The point is for one. For your push. Bro, I got to go back. This one goes. Because because you're not being accurate, you're just making it hard for yourself. Like like if I keep adding numbers, right? But that's more it's actually inaccurate because then I'm just adding more numbers that just keep going on. And then it's like, uh, so there about you know, like, yeah, but the answer is that it's in a cat. That's what I can He said, he said no today. As much he said, I have a little bit of fun. I'm not sure how much of that. Because then you have to say it's like, you said it's like a draw and draw. What does that happen? That's the reason I'm like, how many numbers do I come up to that, right? If I just, if I said 9.81, right? And I don't want to do that, then it's not really accurate because it's not a random shit. But if it's like 9.8, that's the general idea. You've kind of covered the. I did that punch and the whole thing. It's right in the ear hole. Soccer. You ever heard that? Soccer. It's in the ear hole. It's right there, right there in the tip. You just stumble back. Where's my favorite dish? You go. You get up and you go back. No, he grabbed me and then. And I, the I said something like to him, he grabbed me by the throat like this, so I shoved him off and then he sauced it sounded. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 There's a video. Where's the video? And he's like, and the whole rest around the pot. He just walked around around the zoo. He's so rare. So that's it's a 3x. Good thing you didn't throw him back. Right. You would have kept him to pull off the ball. <laughs> Some people call me Frank Cowboy.